like the world's most boring rocks. Like this is, this is driving through flat cornfields, right, for days. And so these are all flat-lying Paleozoic sediments. And then we get out here. Um, this is the, the Colorado Plateau in here. But then this is basin and range. So this is where the crust is being stretched and pulled apart. And then this is California where just like all hell breaks loose. <laughs> and, and so it's, just, it's, it's a spectacular map. But it's very symbolic, and yet it's full with, of information. So, so this is um, the first map that I, I worked with. And I picked a really bad map. This is the first 3D block diagram that I worked on. Um, the Castle Reef, Montana quadrangle. And the reason it was, so how many of you do GIS sorts of things? Excellent. So you have to be a, a real GIS geek to get into this stuff. But like there are all these, like there are problems with coordinate systems. And there are problems with different databases, like different vintages. So it turns out that Montana had its own, its own like funky datum that it used until quite recently. And so just like making everything match up is a little bit of a problem. And this was also, this is a beautiful, this is like the best geology you'll ever see. But it's, it was made, the map, the geology was put on a really old base map and the topography was off, right? So you're gonna see some funny mismatches. But I love this, this guy, Mudge is kind of my like, I, he, he just, he it must have, he was a great geologist. So we have a cross section, and I love the way the map is presented, just as an image, right? So we've got the map, and we have a cross section <coughs> that's actually a north-south cross section through the area. And then we have a series of east-west cross sections, and then all the geologic units over there. So I had a dream, which was to help my students connect the cross sections with the map. So I was, I was asserting before that not all geologists can do this on a sheet of paper, right? And certainly I wouldn't expect my students to be able to do it easily. So what I wanted to do is have a seamless topographic surface and cross section that met. And, and when we look at these, I actually have my SketchUp. I don't know if any of you use, or if all of you use SketchUp, SketchUp is kind of the program that I fell on, A, because it was free, and B, it's kind of easy <laughs> to use um, and learn. But um, there, there are funny little gaps, and they're, they're, they're not my fault, is what I'm trying to say. So this is, this is I'm gonna just give you like the flow through this process, and then I'll show you some of the models. And the details are honestly just not important because everything keeps changing so quickly just in terms of how you can acquire DEMs, digital elevation models, and how you put things together. And, what, and there, there's no one right way to do this. This is just like a technique that I developed, and I've been refining it over the years. So I, a lot of people use Esri software like ArcMap. Um, a lot of people who are in the Mac world and who want free stuff use QGIS. I love Global Mapper is a utility program. It's a very user-friendly little, um, it, it's not quite as powerful as, as ArcMap, but it's good. So I can get a DEM from anywhere in the world, okay? I, everything is free. It's like, I, I kind of pine for the days of nice paper maps, but on the other hand, with digital, like you can just get anything you want for free, pretty much, and you don't have to scan it yourself. So I get the DEM, and I, you have to do stuff, you have to make sure that it's in the same coordinate system as the paper map that you want to use. And you have to make sure that the corners are going to match. So that's not a trivial task. That just takes a lot of careful thought. And then you bring it into SketchUp. And so um, you can use varying levels of detail to bring it into SketchUp. And when you bring it into SketchUp, you convert it. So a DEM is a fundamentally a raster format, right? So each little pixel has a bit of elevation information. When you bring it into SketchUp, you convert it into a TIN, a triangulated irregular network. So it's, a, it's actually a vector-based file. And the advantage is it's a much smaller file size. 
and the, the but the really big advantage is where topography <coughs> is more or less flat, you get big triangles, and where it's super irregular, you get lots of small triangles. So it's putting all of the information where you need it. And so you have that in SketchUp, and you can kind of clean it up in SketchUp and make a nice surface. So that's the topography. Um, now, I've taken a map here from Vermont that a friend of mine made. I wanted to do this for him. Um, so I brought it into uh, ArcMap, and I'm going to crop these various pieces. So there's a map and then some cross sections. And so I think I did this in Photoshop. I just cropped these things, or I did it in Global Mapper. And then in SketchUp, you have the DEM, which is really a TIM, and then you make a plane that's exactly the same dimensions as the DEM, and you just have it sit above or below it, but it has to be directly above it for it to, this to work. You import the map as an image file and map it onto the plane, and then you convert that to one of your materials in SketchUp. So you can actually use the little eyedropper tool and then convert this into an image. And then you're going to use the paint bucket to put it onto the DEM. This, just by way of, of like, like I was doing this in 2008 when, like, like I had to do this myself. Like there was no manual is what I'm trying to say. So it was fun. So then I make, I use that same plane, and I copy the lines of the cross sections up to here, right? And then I'm going to make some vertical planes. Um, so if you are familiar with SketchUp, you know how easy it is to do what I'm showing you here. So all I'm doing is taking these cross section lines and putting them right up here onto this plane, making some vertical planes, and then I map the cross sections onto those vertical planes. So now they're going to be perfectly aligned with the map. And there's a little bit of finagling. I have a better technique than what I'm showing here. But here are the cross sections. They're going to go down into the map. And um, you, you guys must know if you use SketchUp that you can take a block or something, make a big plane through it, and then use that like a knife and cut things in half. So what I want to do is segment the DEM surface so that I can turn individual parts of it on and off. So I, you can expand the cross-section temporarily and then use that like a little knife tool and, and segment the DEM um, and turn off a middle part of it. And then you have to kind of get the... The, there's actually an easier way that I've developed, because I, I use this in, I, I actually teach, I'm going to show you one example that a student of mine made. So I've got the method down so that students who have never done, who have never used SketchUp can finish this in one lab. And so then you bring, so it's not time consuming if you know how to do it, is I think my point. So you bring these guys down, and you can convert them into very nice little block diagrams this way. And then you can use layers that will make it easy to turn things on and off. <coughs> and so I assign all the different components to layers. You can add, SketchUp is great for adding, oh, sorry. No, sorry, I have a question. Because the source, okay, the sections, hmm. come from the geological map. That's right. And the topography, the topography comes from another source. The base map comes from another source, that's yeah. correct. So those that match when you put them together? They don't always match. OK. And there are a number of reasons for that. Yeah, One the, is the sources are different. The, the sources might be different. The, so if the geologist is good, so, so any, any old map, they made a, a cross-section line, and they were going through with a ruler and writing down the elevations and making the, the section line by hand. And you can only expect so much from people, right? And so this is one of, this is one of the improvements I'm going to talk about. Okay. That, that, um, so like people have limitations. Now, with digital maps and, and the technology, you, the, cross, the section line is made automatically with 
accurate topography. So that problem is taken care of, but not for old maps. And it can be very aggravating. And sometimes I think people were having a little too much wine while they were making the cross section. <laughs> um, so, so then we can add shadows to get a really nice um, illumination effect. And then SketchUp lets you make scenes. So you can create a perspective and have different features turned on and off and different styles. So you can do everything with scenes and save them. And um, so to answer your question, what I do now is instead of trimming the cross section first, I actually, it's an illusion. It's, it's really nothing but an illusion. But now I bring the cross section down and I use the DEM. I have a multi-step process where I use the sections to trim the DEM, but I also use the DEM to trim the sections so that there won't be as much mismatch. So, um, okay, so I end up with some pretty nice sections. So this is something that a student of mine made, and the, it, the, 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 the actual connection is just about perfect. Um, so, let me... I have, I have have a bunch of models that I've made, but let me show you some actual SketchUp things. So this is the Castle Reef um, model. And just to show you a little bit what I'm talking about. I can turn, oops. I can turn parts of the map on and off with layers. And then I've also created scenes. And so you can get, and you can convert this into a, an animation. And I'm just gonna jump ahead here. So, and okay. I, I, did, I can't even explain, like, I was having a little too much wine, and I left these black lines here. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I just want to, like, make that clear. My, my block diagrams are much better now. <laughs> but if you really zoom in here, you can see that there's a funky little gap. And this is a mismatch between the old base topography, the modern DEM, right? So if I, if I could somehow magically get a DEM with the old topography, everything would fit perfectly, mm -hmm. right? But it's modern DEM, old cross sections. So it must, be, it must be difficult to really fit your drawing with the terrain, with the topography. How do you know the edges? How do you know the mm -hmm. where, what piece of earth do you have to cut? It requires a few moments of meditation, a peaceful meditation, <laughs> and, and some trial and error. Because it, 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 it does, I, I have kind of systematized it so that, and then, you know, some maps have bends in the cross section. Mm -hmm. So instead of it being a single line, straight line, it's like a bend, mm -hmm. or they don't go to the edges of the maps, and then it's really, it's really hard. I'm not gonna lie. Ah, okay. Um, so anyway, you can, it, it, and then if, if somebody actually has the SketchUp model in hand, then you can like scoot around and look at stuff, and it's a lot of fun. So that was, that was one of my first um, attempts. This is the one that I, was, I had some examples of in the PowerPoint. So we can add that. And you can see that there's still a little bit of a mismatch, but it's much less dramatic. Okay, and so I think that, you know, it's a funny thing. Um, I, I know that lots of you, I'm sure, have worked with 3D programs and you've exported images to try to show things. There's something magical, in my opinion, about 
actually being able to like have the user rotate mm -hmm. things as opposed to just seeing the image like no matter how good the 3d image is it's still a 2d phenomenon and as soon as you start mm -hmm. to be able to move it even just like even if you could just vibrate it a little bit <laughs> i think you know if you could make a gif that would just vibrate a, around the center a little bit it would be tremendously useful mm -hmm. be like a live photo on your your iphone And then this is one um, <coughs> that my student Diddy made recently. So this was somebody who had really never used SketchUp. Um, this is from Vermont also. And so what we're doing here is we're using the DEM to trim the cross section. So there really aren't any gaps in the same way. And I think it's a more pleasing appearance. So there, there are a lot of technical things that one can do. Now, so if, you, if you're thinking about like smaller scale areas of interest, like you know, landscape art, like a park, or even a building site, the, the DEM is just not gonna be very useful, right? So I think your, your options there are to do, like to get a friend with a drone and do some structure from motion stuff and have very super detailed things. And we've done some of that. But then like for lots of places, not everywhere in the world, but like Massachusetts has the entire state flown with LIDAR at one meter resolution and it's free. You can just go to the Mass GIS site and get tiles. They're about a kilometer by a kilometer. But then you can really blow them up and get a very detailed, like if you're, if you're, um, if the site you're interested in has topography, even a little bit, you can really get a lot of detailed information from, from a lighter. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So cool. I just want to uh, ask you from your article that you sent me at the <coughs> reading. I see this source where we can get the geological map and accompanying cross sections from the USGS That's uh, right. GOV, right? That's so is right. this the, still the resource that you're getting the information? Is it the, is, and it, it gets better all the time. Okay, great. Um, and, uh, you know, not every, not every place has been mapped in detail. Sure. So this is basically about America, right? The North America. Maybe. That's right. Okay. That's right. And most countries have something Similar, yeah. although it might not be free. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> I see. Oh, oh sure, sure. Um, so, um, you said in the beginning that like geology is kind of environmental reconstruction, right? I, I'm really interested in that. Like, So, my question is like, once you like figure this out, this 3D modeling, or even the research on the maps and stuff, are you, what are you like, it up like what are you doing with that like are you passing those data to different departments or are you like trying to figure out like proposing something so how do i like public outreach yeah, yeah and also like 